Imagine you live somewhere in the Middle East 5,000 years ago. You plow your fields with strong bronze tools. When soldiers march past, their polished bronze armor gleams in the sunlight. But one day, a foreign army arrives to conquer your lands, and your powerful troops get defeated quickly. Who are these mysterious invaders, and what makes their weapons so effective? These conquerors were the Hittites, and their weapons were made of a metal called iron. Let's take a look at how iron came about and why it replaced bronze. The Iron Age is the third of the technological macroepochs in the history of mankind, following the Stone Age and the Bronze Age. However, iron was well known to various ancient peoples thousands of years before the Iron Age. It was meteoric iron. This type of iron required no smelting of ores and was cold worked. Even during the Neolithic and Bronze Ages, meteoric iron was primarily used for ornamentation, primitive tools and ceremonial weapons. If we compare meteoric iron with bronze, then both materials have sufficiently high characteristics in terms of strength and hardness, and remarkably resistant to corrosion. Also, meteoric iron is already in its native metallic state and does not have to be smelted. However, such iron was extremely rare and therefore was more valuable than gold. Bronze was extremely valuable too. It was created with a mixture of copper and tin, which as a rule had to be transported from afar and they were mined in small quantities. Therefore, with the beginning of the Bronze Age, stone tools continued to be used on a regular basis. So why did the popularity of iron rise so sharply, upgrading the ancient world to the Iron Age? It is believed that the collapse of the Bronze Age and the disruption in trade routes made tin and copper scarce commodities, leading to a sharp decline in bronze production. This shortage likely caused people to experiment with other metals. What they came up with was iron, which was found in bogs. However, smelting iron from bog ore turned out to be quite a difficult job ancient metallurgists had to come up with a fundamentally new process. The bottom of a bloomery furnace was covered with charcoal and fire was made. When the furnace grew to be red hot, layers of bog ore and charcoal were loaded alternately into it from above. Air was pumped into the furnace with bellows. But the temperatures achieved during the process were not enough to melt iron. The temperature rose to only about 1200 degrees Celsius which meant that the melting point of iron was not reached. Small particles of iron fell to the bottom of the furnace and became welded together to form a spongy mass of bloom. The bloom was removed from the furnace and beaten with a hammer to drive the molten slag out of it. The result was wrought iron, a much better product. However, this early iron did not offer any significant technological advantage over bronze. Bronze was denser, harder and far more resistant to corrosion. But wrought iron was very low in carbon content. Tools made from it were too soft and downright brittle. Therefore, initially blue iron was used for making ornaments and some tools only. Still, unlike copper and tin, bog ore was more widespread. So the availability of raw materials became the main advantage of iron over bronze and made it possible to equip more numerous armies with cheap iron weapons. Concurrent with the transition from bronze to iron was the discovery of carburization, a process of impregnation of iron with carbon. Naturally, the ancient iron workers were not aware of carbon. They just knew that if you heated iron long enough in a charcoal fire, it got harder and that's how first steel in the world was developed. Following the discovery of carburization, another method for hardening iron was discovered. The forged object was immersed in cold water or snow, which helped to increase the metal's strength. Innovations like carburization and hardening turned soft wrought iron into steel, which completely replaced bronze. Steel weapons and tools were nearly the same weight as bronze ones, but stronger. Additionally, iron tools could be sharpened when they got blunt. 
The Iron Age wasn't a single time period and didn't occur simultaneously around the world. The earliest evidence of extensive iron smelting comes from the Hittites. However, their use of iron does not officially mark the beginning of the Iron Age because they kept the secret of its fabrication for several centuries. Their skill at iron working gave them a potent edge on the battlefield. Iron arrowheads and spearheads, as well as iron chariots, rained hell on their enemies who were armed with bronze weapons at best. These technological advancements allowed the Hittites to extend their rule over larger territories. But the Hittite Empire fell and the secrecy could no longer be maintained. Iron smelting technology began to spread throughout the Middle East. Gradually, iron making skills spread to the Aegean Islands and Greece. Then the Iron Age began in Mesopotamia, South Caucasus and Iran. In India, there was a Great Iron Age. At that time, local smiths were famous throughout Asia and Indian swords were highly valued even in the Mediterranean countries. Chinese metallurgists, on the other hand, did not accept iron immediately and continued working with bronze. But later they were to develop larger, even hotter furnaces capable of producing cast iron. This allowed them to make metal products not by forging but by casting. As for Europe, iron got there in various ways. In the south, the Iron Age began thanks to the Greek colonists. And in Eastern Europe, iron working was probably introduced from the Caucasus. Then it slowly spread northwards and westwards over the next 500 years. In Africa, iron smelting technology developed independently. There was no Bronze Age here, so it was iron that immediately began to replace stone. Interestingly, some African tribes used massive termite mounds as iron kilns. The Iron Age became a new stage in the development of civilization, the next stage of evolution and cognition of human capabilities. First of all, farming techniques improved. Iron farming tools made it possible to break up toughest soils and clear large forest areas for crops. As a result, the Middle East and Europe quickly lost their major forests and the face of the earth changed forever. Technological innovations in agriculture led to an increase in population growth. Mass production of iron weapons signified a breakthrough in the warfare of the day. A wide assortment of new and novel weaponry was introduced. Individual body armor protecting soldiers in battle also underwent changes. The same goes about horse armor which became more elaborate and effective. Introduction of new iron tools greatly facilitated construction and made it possible to bring it to a new level. During the Iron Age, the first high-rise building known as the Lighthouse of Alexandria was built. The wheel was improved. This gave impetus to the development of carriage transport. As more roads were created, wagon use became more popular. Boating technology improved a lot in the Iron Age and helped people become more connected than ever before. Trade flourished during this period. The famous Great Silk Road trade route was launched. As a consequence of the development of trade, the earliest currency and first metal coins were introduced. Iron working revolutionized various crafts. A whole range of tools was now produced by blacksmiths. Pottery reached its fullest potential. And mass production of ceramics was launched. 
The wood pole lathe allowed workers to make novel items of wood, including bowls, plates and buckets. Artisans achieved an outstanding success with the advent of sewing needles, and a spinning wheel became an easier way to produce yarn and thread for clothing. People's lifestyles changed profoundly. The first iron knives for various purposes, iron cauldrons and forks appeared on the scene. The Iron Age also saw the invention of the rotary quernstone. There are different opinions regarding the end of the Iron Age. Some historians argue that the Iron Age never ended. This was most likely because this metal was widely used, particularly during the Industrial Revolution and later, and of course, is still used even today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.